Hi, this is Jim Amini at ColorHQ.com. Today I'm going to show you how to profile your monitor using the i1 Match software by X-Ray and the i1 Spectrophotometer. The i1 Spectrophotometer will not only profile your monitor, but you can also profile your printer, your projector, your digital camera, and your scanner. This device here, the i1 Display 2, also comes bundled with i1 Match software and it will only profile your monitor. So you can use either of these two devices to profile your monitor and they do a very accurate job of uh, getting good monitor calibration. So today I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how to best profile your monitor using the i1 Match software. So let's get started. First thing you want to do is hook up your i1 uh, Display 2 or Spectro uh, to your computer uh, through an open USB port. So I'm going to just connect the, the USB cord here right on the back and your computer will now see your i1. Uh, when you start the i1 match software this will be the first page that you will see and as you can see here um, you can profile a monitor, a projector, a scanner, a printer, or a digital camera. Uh, these modules uh, may be unlocked with your i1. Um, you can uh, purchase modules um, later to expand your i1. The i1 Display 2, on the other hand, uh, you will see this whole template here, uh, but you will only be able to profile your monitor with the i1 Display 2 colorimeter. So, uh, for the purpose today, we're going to be profiling a monitor, so I want to make sure that that's selected. Uh, and then I want to go into the advanced mode. The easy mode uh, is going to profile your monitor to I believe 6500 Kelvin, 120 uh, candelas uh, for a white luminance and a gamma 2.2. So it kind of streamlines um, your target parameters for you, um, but to get the best uh, output, uh, the best print match, we're going to use the advanced mode here. So go ahead and click the right arrow, and on the next page here you'll see you can select either an LCD, CRT, or a laptop display. For today we're going to be profiling an LCD. So, And on this page, this is a very important page, this is where you're going to set your target uh, parameters for your profile. Um, first thing here you'll see is the white point. Uh, it's already set to warm white 5000 Kelvin or D50. That's the print industry standard, 5000 Kelvin. Um, generally out of the box and with the easy mode, it'll set it to 6500 Kelvin. Now 6500 Kelvin is the NTSC broadcast standard. So that's, that's what they use for TV. Um, so this is going to be good on your, on your computer for uh, web viewing, uh, editing video, or uh, viewing videos on your computer. So uh, if you want to have a setting for web viewing or video uh, video editing, that sort of thing, then you're going to want to calibrate to 6500 Kelvin. But for today, we're going to be profiling for a print match. So what we want is this 5000 Kelvin or D50 here. For a gamma, um, generally, this is correct here in saying 2.2 is recommended. Uh, the only other time I would switch from 2.2 is if I was working in a full pro photo RGB uh, workflow. That means um, from you know from the computer to the printer, I'm keeping everything in pro photo RGB. In that case, uh, you would want to select 1.8 for your gamma. But generally, uh, most people are going to be using the 2.2 gamma here. Luminance, this area here, very important for print matching. You'll see that the i1 Match software recommends 120. Uh, that's the LCD recommendation. Well, if you calibrate to 120, the basic thing that's going to happen is your prints are going to come out a lot darker than your monitor. So very important here. Uh, we want to make sure um, we bring this down. And what we recommend here at Color HQ is anything between 80 and 100. And it's going to be dependent on the monitor that you have. Um, generally, we use 90 as a starting point. If your print is still darker than your monitor after calibrating to 90, you want to bring it down to 80. If, uh, if, your, if your print is brighter than your monitor after calibrating to 90, then maybe you go up to 100. Now 120 is going to be great for web viewing, um, video editing, viewing videos, that sort of thing. But for print matching, 
uh, you're gonna wanna you wanna go with a lower number. Now, uh, some monitors uh, come right out of the box really bright. They're called extra bright or true bright or, or what have you. Um, these really ultra bright monitors. Typically not the best for uh, for print matching or graphics editing. Um, those are going to be better for gaming or you know video viewing that sort of thing. Uh, basically what you're going to have to do is bring your brightness down as far as you can to try to reach this 80, 90, 100 mark. A lot of times you might not be able to get under 120 to 110 uh, with some of those extra bright monitors. So keep that in mind when purchasing a monitor. So for today, what we're going to go with is 90 here as a, as a good starting point for a good print match. As far as performing the ambient light check, um, unless you have a lot of light splashing on your screen, um, I wouldn't recommend um, performing this check. If you wanted to see uh, you know what the color temperature of the bulbs are in your room you can certainly use the I1 um, to take a measurement to see uh, what your bulbs are putting out um, but for the purpose of today uh, we're not going to do an ambient light check um, I try to keep my monitors in an area where I know uh, light is not going to be splashing directly onto that monitor a hood you know around the monitor can certainly help um, prevent any external light from hitting the monitor surface so uh, for today we're, we're going to just skip the ambient light check here. I'm going to go here and the next thing we're going to do is calibrate our I1 uh, to get ready for, uh, for monitor profiling. In order to calibrate your I1 uh, spectrophotometer you need to use uh, this calibration plate here. You just simply place the I1 right on the calibration plate. Click calibrate and your I1 uh, software will tell you uh, whether or not your calibration was successful here. The next thing you'll need to do is uh, place your I1 onto your monitor. So uh, with the I1 Spectro here, it comes with this uh, counterweighted uh, you know, plate here. Basically the best way to do this is line the grooves up and twist it and it'll lock into place. Be careful when you take this off you want to make sure that you you pull it out where the grooves are. You don't want to um, you know crack these uh, these little holders here because that's what's going to hold your I1 into place. So you go ahead and lock it into place here. Best thing to do is to tilt your monitor back just a bit uh, just to make sure that this plate rests flat on your monitor. You don't want any light leaking through on the sides here. And you can literally place this anywhere on your monitor. I'm just going to put it right here for now um, just to show you um, what we're doing. So, okay, there you go. Your I1's placed on your monitor. You're ready to calibrate.